Hello, this is Craig Scott from FightTalk.net. I have the pleasure to be joined on the phone this evening by Sonny Fredrickson. Um, age 22, 16 fights, 16 wins and 10 knockouts. Sonny, how are you, mate? I'm doing good, man. Good, good. Thanks for joining me. Um, quick, quick introduction here. We, we do a series here called the Breakout Series, which is for people who are now ranked in the top 15 with a governing body. And we just want to find out a little bit more about them in the UK. So give us a bit of insight as to how you got into boxing, mate. You know, I used to always watch classic boxing on TV when I was younger. And always it was an interest of mine. And that gym opened up down the street. So then I just got in the gym and I've been in the gym ever since. Yeah, I seen that you... Am I right in saying you had a, quite a, an interest in other sports as well? You did quite a few different sports at school? Yeah, I did um, football. Um, but that's actually like the American football, mm. um, basketball, not basketball, I mean baseball. I used to play basketball, it's just like fun, mm. um, um, baseball, track, stuff like that. Nice. So what swayed you away from those sports and, and kind of made you focus on boxing? Was it just, it caught your interest and, and it become a bit of an, an addiction for you? I just I enjoyed boxing more, you know, it was more one on one sport, you know, just it was more it was more challenging than other sports I did. And I and I like like to have a challenge and it was just it was real fun to me. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um you were obviously you had an accomplished amateur career. Am I right in saying you had hundred and twenty wins from hundred and twenty eight fights? Yeah. Fantastic uh, record. For an amateur, uh, sixty knockouts from one hundred and twenty wins, which again in the amateur game is is something special. What what was it that made you turn professional? Because you turned professional at quite a young age. Um, I was I just wanted to pursue um that you know I I didn't really feel like going to college, so I just wanted to just focus on boxing and just make my life at an early age because you know it wasn't getting I don't know I thought nineteen was a good age to turn pro. And you you feel now obviously time to you've, develop. Yeah, yeah. You've had a few years obviously in the in the paid ranks now. Do you still feel that was a good time to turn pro? You don't wish you had a couple of extra years or you're you're quite happy with it? No, I'm ha- I'm happy with it, you know, the the time, you know, the build up, you know, I got to learn a lot, you know, at nineteen turning pro, you know. So if if I was turning pro just now, you know, I'm saying I would have to build up and just getting ranked, you know, now I'm already ranked. So the time I got to learn and develop, I got to develop in the pros. Yeah, I guess you haven't had a, you haven't had a bad time since you turned pro. Uh, Sixteen wins and, and ten stoppages. Now you mentioned there you are now ranked twelfth in the WBA. Fantastic news! Congra- uh, congratulations. Yeah, no, no, I'm number eleven now. They oh just updated shit! Updated the rankings. Nice. You moved up. Yeah, moved up a slot. I just because my last fight, I think it it was why. Oh sweet! Well, congrats again, then number eleven. My bad. Um, no. Are you are you on track, mate? Did you think you would be at this stage, uh, sixteen fights down the line? Did you did you think you would be ranked at this stage, or are you ahead of schedule? Um, I thought you know I thought around probably around like you know, probably almost twenty fights. You know I thought I was gonna start getting ranked, but you know it's a little bit ahead of the schedule than what I actually expected. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's quite early, but I, I guess sixteen fights. You see guys fighting for. World titles, uh, 16 fights and 17 fights. You've got Javonta Davis just fought, I think it was his 17th fight, and he, he managed to win a title. And we have, obviously, yeah. big Anthony Joshua over here won a title in his 16th fight. So it happens, definitely. Now, you are from Toledo. Am I saying that correctly? Yeah, Toledo, Ohio. Toledo, Ohio, which is the hometown of Robert Easter Jr. I know you and Robert spent a bit of time together. I think we spoke previously, and you were at one of his weigh-ins. How... How has how has boxing changed in Toledo since Robert won his world title? Have you seen more interest in the sport there, or has it always been quite big? Well, he de- he definitely made it a lot bigger because you know he just fought for his world title again here in um, Toledo, and he sold out the arena. So there's a lot of people starting to get a bigger interest in boxing in Toledo. So it's make it's making the boxing scene come back. You know, a lot a lot more fights are going on in Toledo now. Just like even like. Other like club shows are happening now, it's just because people are interested in watching it now. Is it quite a? I, I don't really know much about Toledo myself. Is it? Is it quite a large city? Is, is, what's the population there? I think it's about four hundred, five hundred thousand people. Okay, 
So I guess in the in the grand scheme of the USA, it could be considered quite small, maybe. Um, yeah, it's, it's it's average size. Yeah. Cool. I was just going to say, I think it takes sometimes maybe just one one fighter to win a world title, and and people in in a city sometimes get a little bit more interested in it. You know. Yeah, yeah it, it, that definitely happened. How do you know, Robert? How how do you go back together from amateur days or? Um. Pretty much, we just we just box at the same gym. You know. I just know from the gym, you know, we all work out together. I spar him sometimes for his fights. It's just, just help him out. And he spars me, helps me out. It's all kind of just, just all working together at the gym. Nice, nice. Now you have fought from as late as 135 pounds up to 147 pounds. Why, why this? Why such a drastic difference in weight? Are you just trying to find the natural weight? Do you think you've found it now? Um, my last fight, you know, I came in at 140, but my opponent he came in heavy, so I had to gain weight so order in order to fight him. Ah, okay. So okay. I, that's what I had to do, just because I I'm gonna win my fight, but back now. Yeah, yeah. So you normally around 140, yeah? Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah, 140. Cool. Now I read an article recently. Um, I think it may have been on Throne Boxing, and it was about you know just just how you got into boxing and your influences when you were when you were coming up. And it said that you were heavily influenced by Oscar De La Hoya. Is that correct? Yeah, Oscar De La Hoya. You know, he's one of my big influences, and um, Felix Trinidad. Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. And what what is it about De La Hoya that you that you try and take into into the ring yourself? What is it you liked about Oscar? You know, he he was always um he always had a good uh, attack. And, Really nice body shots, and that's what I like to like to do in my fights. Yeah, I seen. I watched a couple of clips of you, man, and you you wing those shots to the body. Savage, savage shots to the body. Yeah, that's body, I like body shots. Is, to me, is the, my favorite punches. Yeah, which kind of brings me on to Ricky Hatton. Now, I seen you spent also a little bit of time with Ricky Hatton. What was what was the background there? What was the situation that led you to meet Ricky? Um, he, he when he brought his fighter to fight Rashid Warren. He was um, he came to our gym and he was um practicing at our gym. He's training his fighter. Ah oh, yeah yeah yeah, cause Rushy Warren fought on the Easter card, is that right? Yes. Ah. Yeah yeah yeah, and Hatton's fighter won the title. I can't. I'm not going to try and pronounce his name. That's a tough one. Yeah, I don't know his name either. <laughs> um, what well, what was Ricky saying? Did he watch you train? Did you did you have a conversation with him? Uh, he didn't watch me train. Actually, I actually came in. It was on a Sunday, and you no, know, we wasn't training that day. But my coach told me Ricky Hatton was coming to the gym, so I went up there just to meet him and just to have a little conversation with him. It was not too much, not too much. I'm um, just talking about boxing and everything. Just told me to stay focused and keep training hard. Nice, nice. Well, that's good. I think Ricky's definitely getting more involved in, in training, and it's good that he still shows his face in boxing. He's a massive, massive star here. I was at a show last week, and um. He had one of his fighters there, and, and the whole arena just went nuts when he was there. So, yeah, massive star. Yeah. Now, a lot of people in the UK think that the division you're currently fighting in is the, the strongest in the UK in terms of homegrown fighters. What do you know about the fighters from England, Ireland, Wales, Scotland? Do you know any of the names that are floating about here? Uh, I, don't really, I don't really know none of the names. Uh, I think there's a guy, he's ranked number five. I actually watched a video on him. Um, he, he looked it pretty solid, and um, I forget his name, name though. And um, I just know of uh, Ricky. Yeah. Those only two fighters I know of. Yeah, you got um Robbie Davis Jr. is ranked in your governing body at five or six, I believe. Yeah, that, that's what I'm talking about. He, he looked it pretty solid. Yeah, he's a good fighter. And then we have a couple of kind of louder people. We have a boy called O'Hara Davis, who's a uh, quite a outspoken fighter yeah it's, it's quite a good division over here um, the division in the US you've got a couple of decent fighters there as well obviously Terence Crawford is is far and away the top fighter in the division at the moment do you have your eye on anyone in the US in that division any fights that you think could get made you know realistically I, I rather, I, I'd fight anybody in the top 15 eventually I mean I, you know to, to me, my goal is to fight anyone in the top 15 somewhere that can give me to the world title, you know? So anyone that um, is in the top 15 of anybody at 140 pounds, I'd fight him. Nice. It's a good attitude to have. It's, uh, 
refreshing sometimes unfortunately i think we see politics play a big part in boxing so it's it's good that you have that attitude and you just want to fight anybody that can get you there um this weekend wba you're ranked 11 in wba the wba champion ricky burns fights this weekend uh he's from glasgow as am i hence the scottish accent who do you think is going to take that fight is it is it much something that you know much about the ricky burns and dongo fight well i, I know I know Ricky, so I've seen him fight, you know, I've watched some videos of him, but the other guy, I think I've just seen when he won the title by knockout, but it was like in the first round, so I really didn't get to see much of him, so, for what, what I see, I think he's softball, I mean. Yeah, yeah, so it should be an interesting fight, I think he knocked out Trojanovski, didn't he, in the first round with that massive left hook. Um, yeah, that, 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 was, that was a big knockout right there. Heavy, heavy knockout. So I, I don't really know too much about him. Well, we'll soon see. We'll soon see. I think this weekend we are going to be live over in the UK at that fight. So it should be interesting. And we'll see who the winner and who the the owner of the title for you, the WBA title, is going to be moving forward. Listen, Sonny, thank you very much for your time, mate. It's been a pleasure to catch up with you. Um, we'll, we'll hopefully catch up with you again in the future when you get some more big fights lined up. Do you know when you're out next? I, I've definitely talk about May 13th, hopefully, here in... Um Ypsilanti, Michigan, on James Tony's last fight, his, his, his undercard. Yeah, James Tony's fighting for the WBF heavyweight title, I think. Yeah, he's fighting Ypsilanti, well, and I'm going to be the co-main event. Fantastic! What an honor to be the co-main to a guy like James Tony. That's a that's a massive fight. Yeah, yeah, it's it's, uh, it's going to be a big shot up there. Excellent. Listen, thank you very much for talking to FightTalk.net. It's been a pleasure, uh, and I appreciate your time, mate. Thank you very much. Thank you.